welcome to day 62 of the Restoration Fitness 90 Day Healthy Habits Challenge. Today we're going to review the calculation we talked about yesterday in order to start looking more at how we're going to use target heart rate training zones to get you in the right intensity for your workouts. Yesterday we talked about the Carvonian method of heart rate calculation to get an estimated target heart rate and I wanted to go into more detail with an example today. Essentially, if we're looking at someone who's a 35 year old person we're going to take 220 minus 35. If it's a female, we'd take 226 minus 35. But we're going to pretend it's a male today. And then the resulting number will give our max heart rate. We're going to take our max heart rate and subtract 60, which would be our resting heart rate, which will give us our number of 125, which is our heart rate reserve. We're then going to multiply our heart rate reserve number by 0.6 and 0.8, which is the training zone of 60 to 80% of our intensity. From there, we're going to take those two numbers that we get from, from multiplying those and add back our resting heart rate. So we're getting 75 plus 60, which is 135, and the 160 here, which is basically what our target heart rate training zone is for a 60 to 80 percent of, of, of intensity, or 135 to 160 beats per minute. If we're going to be taking a 15 second pulse, let's say we're taking a 15 second rest, we're evaluating our pulse at either the radial or carotid artery like we talked about on day 60, and we're going to divide that, so what we'll do is divide both of these numbers by 4, which would give us 34 to 40, which is an easy way to basically get a quick pulse uh, when you're going to take your heart rate. Now, what do we do with these numbers, and how do we actually decide what zone we should be in? It's all based on a percentage of that heart rate reserve number. So what we're going to do today is talk about what those zones are. We essentially need to have a variety of different zones to get the most out of our workouts. We need recovery days. We also need days where we're working on improving our aerobic capacity or our ability to use oxygen. And then we're also going to need days where we work more into an anaerobic zone, which is where we really push our body to the limit, which is going to challenge more of our ability to convert our uh, oxygen debt into the ability to produce energy for our muscles to work. This is basically improving our lactic, lactate threshold. So if we're going to work in a recovery zone, we're going to be looking at doing 60 to 80 percent intensity. Basically we want to do these on, we want to do this on days where we're basically getting the need, we have the need to basically recover. So we're going pretty slow, not really challenging our heart rate too much at all. This is going to be about one to two days a week worth of our activity. If we're going to get more into the aerobic zone, we really want to be focusing on this more like maybe three to four days a week. Depends on what your desire is for your life. If you're looking to try to lose weight, I want you to start spending some time more in the anaerobic zone, which is the 80 to 90 percent zone. What this does again is it helps us convert lactic acid into energy in order to be able to prolong our workouts. Our body has to work a lot harder in short periods of time when we're in an anaerobic zone, but it's still beneficial to spend a longer duration, perhaps maybe a long slow distance run or a long hike, doing our aerobic activity. It's not that it's bad, it's just we're trying to get the most out of our time. So I hope that helps you by using the calculation and some of these estimates for target heart rate zones to give you an idea of how hard you should be working in your workouts while you're in the 90-day plan. Thanks, I'll see you tomorrow.